Hey, it's Dave, and it's time for today's episode of At Home Science. Today, we're going to be looking at crystals. For this experiment, you're going to need a couple of things. One, a source of heat, and a parent to help watch you to make sure that it doesn't get too hot. You're going to need a bit of water to dissolve all, all of your crystals to begin with. And then, you're going to need a crystal. Now, you can use a lot of different things. You could use, for example, some Epsom salt, which you might find, yeah, uh, find in, in the bathroom. Or, my personal favorite, some good old-fashioned sugar, because it's delicious. What you're going to want to do is get the water nice and hot. So we'll put it onto a stove and turn it on. Once your water is really hot and you have a, you have a, have a parent or a guardian nearby watching to make sure nothing goes wrong, you can then start to add your crystals. So I'm going to start off with some essence salt crystals because they, they, they turn into wonderful long chains a lot faster than sugar does. So what we're going to do first is add a whole bunch of Epsom salt crystals. Yours might look a little different from this. Some Epsom salts are colored, some are not. But we're going to add a whole bunch. And then we're going to stir it up just to make sure that it's ready to go. You'll notice the crystals don't dissolve right away. We're going to keep heating this until it starts to boil again, stir it, and we're going to keep adding more and more and more crystals until no more crystals are able to dissolve in the water. That's going to take a little while. So, here we go. So now that our water is really, really hot and we have all kinds of Epsom salt crystals dissolved into it, no more are able to dissolve in the water. The reason this happens is, Water can only, only fit so many crystals inside of it. When you add, when you get it hotter, you can fit more and more crystals. But now, we're going to cool it down. So we take our, take our water, which has all the crystals dissolved inside of it. You're going to need an adult to help you with this one. And we're going to pour it into a jar like this. Now you're going to take a pipe cleaner, like one of these, if you want to make a, make a crystal wand. Make, it, make a little loop in the end, or whatever you want, really. You're going to want to get it wet in some water and then pour out a couple Epsom salts and just kind of dip just like this your wand into the Epsom salts. You want to get a couple of small crystals that are sort of sticking to the pipe cleaner. Then we're going to put this inside of our water. Careful, this is very, very hot. And we're just going to let it sit like this. Let it sit for, oh, a couple of hours, and it's going to slowly cool down. As it cools down, you're going to notice that all through, tiny little crystals are going to start dropping out of the water. They're going to click together and get longer and longer and longer and longer until you have huge, long, thin crystals all throughout the water. And when you pull your wand out then, it's going to be covered in beautiful crystals. Put it right, you can put it in temperature or put it into your fridge. And let it slowly cool down. With your extra Epsom salt water, you can offer something different, like making a snowflake. To do that, you use some of your Epsom salt water, the one that has a whole lot of Epsom salt dissolved in it as a super saturated solution. You pour it out onto a nice thin tray like this one here. Make a nice snowflake and dip it into the water. As, as it dries, you'll notice the Epsom salts will slowly start to come out of the solution and give your, give your snowflake a coating of crystal, which is kind of neat. For our next crystal experiment, we're going to use a different kind of crystal. This one is sucrose, also known as sugar. And because of that, this one is more delicious than the last one. But first off, get your water boiling, nice and hot, with the help of a parent, a guardian, or an adult friend. We'll wait for that to get going. Once the water is nice and hot, and your parent or guardian is right nearby, we're going to add, very carefully, some sugar. Just like our last experiment, we're going to keep adding sugar, stopping and stirring, until absolutely no more sugar is able to fit and dissolve into that water. Now when sugar dissolves, what's happening is the crystal of the sugar is actually breaking apart into very, very, very small pieces. Those pieces go floating off into the rest of the water and sort of float away all separate, surrounded by water. So we're just going to keep adding more and more and more. 
Once, once everything is boiling and very, very hot, it is now very, very dangerous. Make sure that your, your parent or guardian does this part. What we have here is a super saturated solution of sugar. It's extremely hot and extremely, extremely sticky. So what we're going to do now is take it off, turn down our, our hot plate, and pour this again into a clean glass jar, like a mason jar. It has to be the kind of jar that can handle a lot of heat. There we go. Wonderful. For the next part, you're going to need some, some kind of thread. It can be any, any kind of string you have sitting around the house, as long as it's clean. Then you're going to take it and tie it onto a stick or a pencil or anything really and have something heavy hanging on the bottom. I've used a, a washer that I've cleaned off very well. We're going to get this string nice and wet. Once the string is wet, we're then going to do what we just did with the last experiment and we're going to dip it into our sugar just like this. So we get a bunch of sugar crystals that are stuck on the string and also on the bottom. Once we, have our, once we have a little bit of sugar crystals attached to our string, all we need to do now is drop it into our container, just like that. Now, we let it sit. What's gonna happen over the next couple days is those crystals on, this, on the string are gonna serve as what are called nucleation points, um, or like seed crystals. Where you have one crystal, all the little bits of crystal that are floating around in the, in, the, in the very, very thick water, that super saturated solution we're talking about earlier, are going to stick to that crystal. And when they stick to the crystal, because it's colder, they're going to make the crystal a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger, until the crystal grows from a small little seed to a giant chunk of clear rock candy that, in a few days, you'll be able to eat. Make sure you take it. I like to put it someplace cold, like in the fridge, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. And that's Crystal Science. I hope you enjoyed this at-home science segment about crystals.